Peaky Blinders is one of the most popular shows on TV. The show has been praised for its strong character development and dark, visceral themes. However, it's also notorious for its extremely violent and gory death scenes. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the worst death scenes in Peaky Blinders. Get your flat caps on as it's about to get bloody. First up, Vicente Cengreta. After John Shelby mercilessly blinds his son Angel, the elderly mobster hires a man to kill Tommy in revenge. Unfortunately, Tommy's beloved new bride, Grace is tragically gunned down in the crossfire during the botched attempt. The Shelby brothers drag Changretta away from the arms of his wailing wife while they attempt to flee the country. Vicente accepts his fate with poise, making the following scene even more unnerving. A heartbroken Tommy describes in blood-curdling detail how he plans to torture Vicente until the sun rises, made all the more disturbing by the increasingly unhinged manner in which Cillian Murphy delivers Tommy's chilling line. After the mask slips for good, Tommy reaches forward exclaiming that he's a blinder by nature and will first take Changretta's eyes. Viewers breathe an almost audible sigh of relief as Arthur puts down Vicente before Tommy can have his barbaric revenge. The audience is left to process the dazingly chaotic sequence of events, unsure as to whether they should be more relief for Changretta or for what now remains of Tommy's soul, which was likely saved by his brother's interruption. Then we have John Shelby. Christmas cards arrive at each of the Shelby residences that bear a black hand, a declaration of war from Luca Changretta, who is hell-bent on avenging the death of his father. Tommy orders the family to come back home to Small Heath so he can protect them on their home turf, and Michael gets sent to pick up John from his family home. The ill-tempered third-born Shelby brother had been an integral part of Peaky Blinders since the beginning. No sooner does Michael arrive at the house before mafia assassins emerge from behind hay bales on an inconspicuous truck, who then proceed to gun Michael and John down in a hail of gunfire before the audience even has time to react. The viewers are left on an utterly devastating cliffhanger. The motionless, bloody bodies of two of the main cast show no signs as to whether either is still alive. The next episode revealed that while Michael had survived the deadly ambush, John became the first victim of Luca's vendetta. It was a truly unforgettable start to a new season, and is an equally unforgettable character death. Up next, Luca Changretta. All hope seems lost for the Shelby family. A bloody vendetta led John and Arthur to be assassinated by Changretta's hitmen, making Tommy concede defeat to the mafioso in order to spare the remaining members of his family. What's the catch here, you ask? Tommy must also give ownership of the entirety of the Shelby business empire. Changretta, while clearly uncomfortable with allowing his father's killer to walk away alive, knows that letting Tommy live with this failure would hurt him far worse than any bullet could. As an enraged Luca yells at Tommy to sign the papers on his knees, Tommy, in a stunning twist of fate, informs Changretta that he has cut a deal with the gang, which is about to take over the Changretta family's assets in New York, led by one pretty famous gentleman named Al Capone. Luca's men standing behind him are now working for Tommy. Tommy gets the upper hand in the savage fist fight that follows before, in yet another twist, Arthur emerges from the background. It's revealed that he has faked his death to lure the Italian to the negotiating table. The eldest Shelby brother avenges John's death, spraying the mobster's brains all over Tommy's gin distillery in a jaw-dropping finale to the season. Vengeance is for the Lord? Not in small heath it ain't. And then we have have Harold Hancock's The Digbeth Kid. It speaks volumes about the fact that although the self-titled Digbeth Kid shows up on screen for only a matter of minutes in the course of a single episode, he still remains one of the most impactful deaths throughout the entire show. Describing him as a naive young man who has seen one too many cowboy films would be putting it pretty lightly. However, Tommy finds his actions amusing and has the kid be stood up, locked up in prison to make up crime numbers to keep up appearances for the police force, which is in the Shelby family's pocket. It's pretty predictable, but it looks like prison is a dangerous place for someone who's a member of Birmingham's most notorious Razor Gang. In a tragic turn of events, the kid is attacked by members of the rival Sabini Gang in prison, who slit his throat in an extremely gruesome fashion to send Tommy a message, ignoring the boy's frantic pleas that he is not real. Seeing such an innocent side character be so viciously murdered in a case of mistaken identity results in a gut-punching scene that lives long in the memory of any viewer who had the stomach to not look away. Next, is Bonnie Gold. One of the most shocking deaths ever seen on TV and easily the most horrifying instance throughout the entire run of Peaky Blinders is the demise of gypsy boxing champion and Aberama Gold's son, Bonnie Gold. He and his father are ambushed by the Billy Boys at their camp, a rival Protestant razor gang led by the despicable Jimmy McAvern. Their attack is a message to Tommy that they are done with operating underneath the blinders. In the cruelest of fate, Bonnie's fighting abilities do him no good here, as McAvern proceeds to 
mercilessly beat the young gypsy to within an inch of his life, all the while mocking his status as an elite fighter. His goons then raised the barely breathing boxer up onto a wooden cross, issuing a gruesome warning that if their demands are not met, Tommy will be next on the cross, before shooting the young gypsy to put him out of his misery. The sheer brutality of the act mixed with the devastated sobs of a desperate father make this one of the most harrowing death scenes that the BBC, or television as a medium, has ever shown. In the immortal words of Alfie Solomons, it was expletive biblical, mate. And then we have Abiramagold. Gold. Having lost his beloved son Bonnie earlier in the season, it seems destined for Abirama to enact revenge for the gruesome death of his son at the hands of Jimmy McAvern. The season finale has the blinders plot to assassinate the loathsome fascist sociopath Oswald Mosley. Tommy has a marksman's rifle trained on his head as he took the stage at a fascist rally in Birmingham. All the while, McAvern watches from the wings as Abirama creeps stealthily towards him, knife in hand and primed to exact vengeance. If you think this season had a happy ending, then you definitely haven't been paying attention. Abirama, fixated on McAvern, is ambushed by a member of the IRA and is ruthlessly stabbed to death in a shocking twist that left fans utterly dazed. The catastrophic injustice of Abirama joining his son in death rather than having the chance to avenge him is unbelievably hard to watch. It's an unforgettable scene where the old saying rings true. When embarking on a journey of revenge, one should dig two graves. Next on the list is Ruby Shelby, an episode that devastated audiences with raw emotions, the heart-wrenching death of Tommy's youngest daughter Ruby is arguably the most shocking death in terms of emotion. Tommy frantically returns home from America after Ruby speaks Romany words about the involvement of the devil. She is then soon hospitalized for tuberculosis. Tommy believes this is all the result of a curse placed by a gypsy woman who blames Tommy for her young daughter's death. Tommy leaves his daughter's side, promising her to find a cure which eventually leads to a crazed search for the woman, culminating in an absolutely delirious rant in a gypsy graveyard. After he's done ripping up the gravestone of the deceased girl and ranting that he would pay her mother any amount of money to lift the curse, the audience is appalled at Tommy's unbridled descent into madness. In a devastating turn of events, Tommy returns to the hospital, convinced that he now had the solution to finding and dealing with his daughter's illness, only to discover his precious daughter has died while he was away. Natasha O'Keefe's heartbreaking cries and Tommy's failure to bid his little girl goodbye tug on even the tightest of better before. In a show where the shell name seemingly affords one the luxuries of a king. It is quite a sobering moment where Tommy realizes that all the money and reputation in the world cannot cheat death. That's a wrap for this video. What is the worst death in Peaky Blinders in your opinion? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.